The outlaw's journey to infamy began in the rough and unforgiving landscapes of the American West during the late 1800s, a period defined by the lawless expansion into the frontier. This era saw the displacement of Native American tribes, the rapid growth of frontier towns, and a surge in crime as individuals sought to carve out their fortunes in a land where the law was often miles away. The outlaw born into this chaotic environment learned early that survival required not only physical toughness, but also a sharp mind capable of outsmarting both enemies and authorities. From a young age, this future outlaw was exposed to a life of hardship and violence. His family, likely struggling to make ends meet, was part of the influx of settlers moving westward in search of land and opportunity. These settlers faced constant threats from both the natural environment and the rough, often violent communities that sprang up around mining camps and cattle towns. The outlaw would have seen firsthand the brutality of frontier justice, where disputes were often settled with a gun and the nearest lawman could be days away. As he grew older, the young man began to drift into the company of rustlers, a common occurrence for boys seeking to escape the drudgery of frontier life or simply looking for a way to survive. Rustling the practice of stealing cattle was rampant in the West, particularly in areas where large herds roamed vast, unguarded stretches of land. These rustlers operated in loose networks, relying on speed, knowledge of the terrain, and a willingness to fight to avoid capture. For the young outlaw, this lifestyle was not just about theft. It was an education in the ways of the wilderness, in evasion tactics, and in the art of deception. During these formative years, the outlaw participated in increasingly bold raids, which required a blend of cunning and brute force. It was during one of these raids that he likely witnessed or even partook in his first gunfight, a rite of passage in the West that marked the transition from boyhood to the hardened life of an outlaw. The ability to use a gun became as essential as knowing how to ride a horse or navigate the rugged terrain. Through these experiences, he developed a reputation for being unusually resourceful, capable of thinking on his feet and making split-second decisions that often saved his life. The young outlaw's criminal activities began small, petty thefts and minor heists, but these early successes only fueled his ambition. As he honed his skills, he started to plan more audacious crimes. His first major breakthrough came with a daring bank robbery in a small but wealthy frontier town. This robbery was not just a random act of violence, but a carefully orchestrated operation. The outlaw and his crew likely spent weeks, if not months, gathering intelligence on the bank, studying its security measures, and timing their strike to perfection. The robbery was executed with precision, leaving the town's lawmen stunned and the community in fear. The success of this bank heist marked a turning point in the outlaw's life. No longer just another rustler or petty thief, he had now made a name for himself as a criminal mastermind capable of outmaneuvering the law. News of the robbery spread quickly, and with it, the legend of the outlaw grew. His ability to evade capture after such a high-profile crime only added to his mystique, drawing the attention of both law enforcement and other outlaws looking to join his crew. As his reputation soared, so did the risks. The outlaw understood that every crime brought him closer to the noose, but it also brought greater rewards and a level of notoriety that few could achieve. He thrived on the thrill of the chase, always staying one step ahead of the sheriffs and posses that pursued him. His early years set the foundation for what would become a legendary criminal career, marked by increasingly bold heists, near-mythical escapes, and a growing bounty that would eventually make him one of the most wanted men in the West. This was not just the birth of an outlaw, it was the birth of a legend that would haunt the American West for years to come. Number 2. The Great Train Robbery the Great Train Robbery orchestrated by this elusive outlaw and his gang was not just a crime of opportunity, but a masterclass in planning and execution. The heist, 
carried out under the cover of darkness on a cold, moonless night, was meticulously designed to exploit the weaknesses in the era's transportation and security systems. This particular train was carrying a significant shipment of gold and cash, which had been earmarked for a major bank, making it a prime target for the outlaw's bold ambitions. The planning phase of the robbery was as crucial as the act itself. The outlaw didn't leave anything to chance. He and his gang spent weeks, possibly months, gathering intelligence on the train's route, schedule, and security protocols. They employed spies and informants who worked within the railway companies or at the banks, gaining insider knowledge that would prove invaluable. The gang knew not only when the train would be most vulnerable, but also the exact number of guards on board, their armament, and their shift patterns. This level of detail allowed the outlaw to devise a plan that minimized risk and maximized the potential for success. The choice of location for the robbery was strategic. The gang selected a remote stretch of track, far from any town or telegraph station, ensuring that any call for help would be delayed. This location also provided them with the cover needed to carry out the heist without immediate interference. The gang utilized the natural terrain to their advantage, choosing a spot where the train would have to slow down due to a steep incline or sharp curve, making it easier to force it to a halt. On the night of the robbery, the gang positioned themselves along the tracks, waiting in the shadows. As the train approached the predetermined spot, they sprang into action. Using either a barricade or a false signal, they brought the train to a stop. The guards, caught off guard by the sudden halt, were quickly overpowered before they could sound any alarm. The gang's efficiency was akin to a military operation, with each member knowing their role and executing it flawlessly. Within minutes, the gang had secured the valuable cargo, loading it onto their horses and disappearing into the night. The aftermath of the robbery was as legendary as the heist itself. Despite an immediate and extensive manhunt launched by both local sheriffs and federal agents, the outlaw and his gang vanished without a trace. Their knowledge of the terrain, combined with prearranged escape routes, allowed them to evade capture. This disappearance only added to the outlaw's mystique, making him a ghost in the eyes of the law. The smoldering remains of the derailed train stood as a stark reminder of the outlaw's daring and skill. The robbery not only highlighted the vulnerabilities in the era's transportation and security, but also set a new standard for criminal enterprises in the Wild West. The outlaw's ability to execute such a high-profile heist without leaving behind any clues solidified his reputation as the most elusive criminal of his time a man who could strike fear into the hearts of those who dared to cross his path. The legend of this great train robbery would go on to inspire countless tales, each adding to the larger-than-life image of the outlaw who outsmarted every sheriff, no matter how sophisticated their strategies. The event became a symbol of the lawlessness of the Wild West, where the line between hero and villain was often blurred and where a single man's cunning could shake the foundations of an entire system. Number three, the final escape. The outlaw's final escape was a culmination of years of evading law enforcement, a testament to his strategic mind and deep understanding of the terrain and human psychology. After the infamous train robbery, his notoriety reached unprecedented levels, drawing the attention of bounty hunters and lawmen from across the country. The $1 million bounty on his head was more than just a reward. It was a challenge to every hunter in the Wild West. However, what many didn't anticipate was the outlaw's extensive network of allies and his ability to disappear completely when necessary. By this time, the outlaw had perfected the art of vanishing. He utilized a series of false identities, each meticulously crafted with its own backstory, allowing him to blend seamlessly into various communities. These identities were supported by forged documents, and his ability to adopt different personas made it nearly impossible for the authorities to track him. His hidden safe houses were scattered across the West, 
often in remote, hard-to-reach areas that only those familiar with the terrain could navigate. These hideouts were supplied by a network of sympathizers, locals who either admired his defiance of the law or had been bought off with a portion of his ill-gotten gains. The outlaws' network extended beyond just safe houses. It included informants within the ranks of law enforcement. These informants provided him with critical information about upcoming manhunts, allowing him to stay one step ahead. It was this web of connections that enabled the outlaw to survive as long as he did, despite the increasing pressure from both local and federal authorities. The final chase began when the outlaw was betrayed by one of his close associates, leading a posse of sheriffs to his location in a remote canyon. The canyon, known for its treacherous paths and hidden caves, was the perfect setting for a last stand. The posse, thinking they had finally cornered him, moved in with caution. However, the outlaw had anticipated this and had spent the previous days preparing the terrain to his advantage. Under the cover of darkness, the outlaw executed a series of maneuvers that would later become the stuff of legend. He used the natural features of the canyon, its narrow passages, steep cliffs, and hidden ledges, to create a labyrinthine network of false trails and diversions. At key points, he left behind misleading signs of his presence, footprints leading to dead ends, disturbed rocks that suggested recent movement, and even items of clothing left strategically to throw off his pursuers. The posse, confident in their numbers and the accuracy of their information, followed these trails deeper into the canyon. As they did, the outlaw moved silently through the night, using the darkness and his intimate knowledge of the terrain to stay just out of reach. By the time the sun began to rise, the posse found themselves disoriented, scattered across the canyon with no sign of their quarry. It was only then that they realized they had been outmaneuvered again. The outlaw's final escape was not just a physical evasion, but a psychological victory. He had turned the hunters into the hunted, leading them on a futile chase that drained their morale and resources. The posse, exhausted and humiliated, had no choice but to retreat, leaving behind the legend of a man who could not be caught. This escape solidified the outlaw's status as a ghostly figure in the annals of the Wild West, a man who defied the law and outwitted every sheriff who came after him, disappearing into the vast wilderness, never to be seen again.